Supreme excellence consists of breaking the enemy's resistance without fighting. Appear weak when you are strong, and strong when you are weak. Let your plans be dark and impenetrable as night, and when you move, fall like a thunderbolt. To know your enemy, you must become your enemy. There is no instance of a nation benefiting from prolonged warfare. Treat your men as you would your own beloved sons, and they will follow you into the deepest valley. Opportunities multiply as they are seized. Even the finest sword plunged into salt water will eventually rust. Move swift as the wind and closely formed as the wood. Attack like the fire and be still as the mountain. When the enemy is relaxed, make them toil. When full, starve them. When settled, make them move. If you wait by the river long enough, the bodies of your enemies will float by. Know yourself and you will win all battles. To win 100 victories in 100 battles is not the acme of skill. To subdue the enemy without fighting is the acme of skill. So in war, the way is to avoid what is strong and strike at what is weak. Be extremely subtle even to the point of formlessness. Be extremely mysterious even to the point of soundlessness. Thereby you can be the director of the opponent's fate. Build your opponent a golden bridge to retreat across. The whole secret lies in confusing the enemy so that he cannot fathom our real intent. When strong, avoid them. If of high morale, depress them. Seem humble to fill them with conceit. If at ease, exhaust them. If united, separate them. Attack their weaknesses. Emerge to their surprise. One may know how to conquer without being able to do it. Victorious warriors win first and then go to war, while defeated warriors go to war first and then seek to win. What the ancients called a clever fighter is one who not only wins, but excels in winning with ease. If the mind is willing, the flesh could go on and on without many things. Rouse him and learn the principle of his activity or inactivity. Force him to reveal himself so as to find out his vulnerable spots. One mark of a great soldier is that he fight on his own terms or fights not at all. If you know the enemy and know yourself, your victory will not stand in doubt. If you know heaven and know earth, you may make your victory complete. You have to believe in yourself. He who is prudent and lies in wait for an enemy who is not will be victorious. If your opponent is of choleric temper, seek to irritate him. Pretend to be weak that he may grow arrogant. Attack is the secret of defense. Defense is the planning of an attack. Thus the expert in battle moves the enemy and is not moved by him. Anger may in time change to gladness. Vexation may be succeeded by content. But a kingdom that has once been destroyed can never come again into being, nor can the dead ever be brought back to life. 
great results can be achieved with small forces. When one treats people with benevolence, justice, and righteousness, and reposes confidence in them, the army will be united in mind and all will be happy to serve their leaders. The wise warrior avoids the battle. Pretend inferiority and encourage his arrogance. Attack him where he is unprepared. Appear where you are not expected. Convince your enemy that he will gain very little by attacking you. This will diminish his enthusiasm. Ponder and deliberate before you make a move. Knowing the enemy enables you to take the offensive. Knowing yourself enables you to stand on the defensive. He will win who knows when to fight and when not to fight. To secure ourselves against defeat lies in our own hands, but the opportunity of defeating the enemy is provided by the enemy himself. Mystify, mislead, and surprise the enemy. It is easy to love your friend, but sometimes the hardest lesson to learn is to love your enemy. If ignorant both of your enemy and yourself, you are certain to be in peril. Bravery without forethought causes a man to fight blindly and desperately like a mad bull. Such an opponent must not be encountered with brute force, but may be lured into an ambush and slain. Wheels of justice jine slow but grind fine. The general who advances without coveting fame and retreats without fearing disgrace, whose only thought is to protect his country and do good service for his sovereign, is the jewel of the kingdom. Never venture, never win. Move not unless you see an advantage. Use not your troops unless there is something to be gained. Fight not unless the position is critical. He will win who, prepared himself, waits to take the enemy unprepared. Plan for what it is difficult while it is easy. Do what is great while it is small. Every battle is won before it's ever fought. Be where your enemy is not. Disorder came from order. Fear came from courage. Weakness came from strength. Begin by seizing something which your opponent holds dear. Then he will be amenable to your will. Rewards for good service should not be deferred a single day. If he sends reinforcements everywhere, he will everywhere be weak. If his forces are united, separate them. Water shapes its course according to the nature of the ground over which it flows. The soldier works out his victory in relation to the foe whom he is facing. It is only the enlightened ruler and the wise general who will use the highest intelligence of the army for the purposes of spying, and thereby they achieve great results. Conform to the enemy's tactics until a favorable opportunity offers. Then come forth and engage in a battle that shall prove decisive. Therefore, just as water retains no constant shape, so in warfare there are no constant conditions. When your army has crossed the border, you should burn your boats and bridges in order to make it clear to everybody that you have no hankering after home. If you know yourself but not the enemy, for every victory gained you will also suffer a defeat. 
Those skilled at making the enemy move do so by creating a situation to which he must conform. They entice him with something he is certain to take, and with lures of ostensible profit they await him in strength. If there is disturbance in the camp, the general's authority is weak. Hence that general is skillful in attack whose opponent does not know what to defend, and he is skillful in defense whose opponent does not know what to attack. The worst calamities that befall an army arise from hesitation. Foreknowledge cannot be gotten from ghosts and spirits, cannot be had by analogy, cannot be found out by calculation. It must be obtained from people, people who know the conditions of the enemy. Do not swallow bait offered by the enemy. Do not interfere with an army that is returning home. If you fight with all your might, there is a chance of life whereas death is certain if you cling to your corner. Success in warfare is gained by carefully accommodating ourselves to the enemy's purpose. Conceal your dispositions, and your condition will remain secret, which leads to victory. Show your dispositions, and your condition will become patent, which leads to defeat. You can ensure the safety of your defense if you only hold positions that cannot be attacked. You can be sure of succeeding in your attacks if you only attack places which are undefended. Whether in an advantageous position or a disadvantageous one, the opposite state should be always present to your mind. If those who are sent to draw water begin by drinking themselves, the army is suffering from thirst. One may know the condition of a whole army from the behavior of a single man. When the outlook is bright, bring it before their eyes, but tell them nothing when the situation is gloomy. The art of war is self-explanatory. It is the unemotional, reserved, calm, detached warrior who wins, not the hothead seeking vengeance and not the ambitious seeker of fortune. Invincibility lies in the defense, the possibility of victory in the attack. By reinforcing every part, he weakens every part. The spot where we intend to fight must not be made known, for then the enemy will have to prepare against a possible attack at several different points. We cannot enter into alliances until we are acquainted with the designs of our neighbors. The control of a large force is the same principle as the control of a few men. It is merely a question of dividing up their numbers. In war, then, let your great object be victory, not lengthy campaigns. Whoever is first in the field and awaits the coming of the enemy will be fresh for the fight. Whoever is second in the field and has to hasten to battle will arrive exhausted. It is the rule in war, if our forces are ten to the enemy's one, to surround him if five to one, to attack him, if twice as numerous, to divide our army into two. Unhappy is the fate of one who tries to win his battles and succeed in his attacks without cultivating the spirit of enterprise, for the result is waste of time and general stagnation. O oh, divine art of subtlety and secrecy! Through you we learn to be invisible, through you inaudible, and hence we can hold the enemy's fate in our hands. When the common soldiers are too strong and their officers too weak, 
The result is insubordination. Confront them with annihilation, and they will then survive. Plunge them into a deadly situation, and they will then live. When people fall into danger, they are then able to strive for victory. Order or disorder depends on organization, courage or cowardice on circumstances, strength or weakness on dispositions. To lift an autumn hair is no sign of great strength. To see the sun and moon is no sign of sharp sight. To hear the noise of thunder is no sign of a quick ear. Sun Tzu was an ancient Chinese military strategist and philosopher who lived during the 5th century BC. He is best known for his book, The Art of War, which remains one of the most influential texts on military strategy and leadership. Sun Tzu emphasized the importance of planning, preparation, and understanding the enemy's weaknesses in order to achieve victory with minimal conflict. His teachings extend beyond military affairs and offer insight into effective decision-making, adaptability, and the importance of understanding one's own strengths and limitations.